and more. Do and more. Do and more. They tell you what they know. Do it for do some more. Do some more. Hey. Do it for do some more. When it comes to the kings, it's my favorite show. Do it for do some more. Do some more. Do it for do some more when it comes to the kings. Uh, big hopes and dreams as we cover our kings. Never cover the kingdom, but we loving our kings. And we covered your prayers as we doing our thing. Big deuce with the par, little mo on the screen. Solo or together, still do it for team. Never switch up for a dollar, a revenue stream. So we always got each other, balance out the beam. Do some more, and that's the end of the thing. We are live! What just went down at Golden One Center? No, 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 no. You're wide awake. You are not dreaming. The Kings clapped that ass. How are we doing, everybody? Hi. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Kings fans. You're still alive. The <laughs> Golden okay. State Warriors. Let's take a second. Let's just take a second. Let's, some music for a second. Let's just take a second. To breathe. And just um Bleh. rest in peace. Oh, I don't Golden State Warriors. Rest in peace. Let us Ooh. do it. Paul Bear. You know, I get it. You Every know. time we Paul do Bear. it. Yeah. Oh, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, it is all over. You felt the power of the beam. Give me a hell yeah. Good job. Oh, man. A little, you know, it's one of those nights that I feel like you can, and I said this even on the postgame show, you could be a little Pat Bev with it. Jump on a scores table, uh, act yeah. like you won a championship, and so many Warriors fans tonight are gonna be like, "Act like you've been there before." No, no, because we haven't been there before. So let us be petty, oh. rub it in all the things. But as we do that, yes, in the back of mind, we know four rings. We know respect, respect, respect. Best players in the world. Blah blah blah. blah. Who cares right now? Just well, it's it, time to celebrate. To be honest, and one thing we should acknowledge what? is on. Let's be honest about it. You did beat the Warriors without Clay and Steph. You're messed up. That's, now you you're get, now you're getting really pet. This is what he does. I. No, Clay didn't play. Did, did he play? Wait. He. Wait. Oh for ten. Oh for six from three. Oh, I'm so I I honestly I did not it's, realize. It's fun. Okay, we gotta stop it's doing fun. that. We gotta stop doing that. We're having too much fun. Hell yeah. I mean, no, and you know what? He had a 37-point quarter against the Kings years back. Like, let us soak in zero points. <laughs> we appreciate all you guys hanging out with us late, late. We're starting way later than normal. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for being here. If you have not thank done you. it yet, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. All it does is help our channel grow. But the night can't get started. The podcast can't get started. How about a little play in fog? The Sacramento Kings clap that Warriors head. What? No! I don't know what to Karma. say. Karma. Karma. Oh. Is it full? Turn the music on. Oh, wait, turn it up? Oh, oh God. This is the moment. Deuce, you're... The fog machine's broken. That's bad vibes. Hold on, hold on. This is, it's called karma because we're being petty assholes. No, it just makes it much sweeter when it works, you know what I'm saying? Oh my God, what do I do? What are, oh my God. Hit the music again. Okay, 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 okay. ready, ready? Three, two, one. It's time for some fog. The Sacramento Kings clap that Warriors Welcome to Ellis Island! Clay Thompson, where were you? A 
And how about Keenan We stay alive. The Warriors dynasty is over. And the Sacramento Kings are headed to the Big Easy, where they will take on a team they have not beat this year. The New Orleans Pelicans for a chance to take on OKC. How sweet is that? Oh. oh. How was that? Much better. I I don't know why it didn't work. I plugged it back I, in. Plugged. Can I be honest? Yeah. I like. I did. I believe in a lot of things. But, about, first, how about but first, I guess we're gonna do this. I mean, it, out of all the things that happened, what? Can you believe they clapped them? Why they clap? That ass. Yeah. That warrior's ass. I uh, appreciate you guys being here. Oh, it is so foggy. Oh, my shit. All right, uh, we've shit. had enough celebrating. Now it's time to really start the show. Let's talk about what went down tonight for the Sacramento Kings as they send the Warriors packing. The Warriors with Steph, Clay, CP3, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Draymond, mm -hmm. gone. Gone. Forever. Give me a hell yeah. Right. <laughs> Do some more. We're coming down in three, two, one. Hit my music. Deuce. Do sin more, do sin more. They tell you what they know. Do sin more, do sin more, do sin more. The podcast that you know. Welcome into the Do Sin More podcast, recording this on a Tuesday night. The Kings taking on the Warriors in a win or go home game. The loser season ends. The winner advances to take on the loser of the 7-8 matchup. What was in store tonight? Were the Kings going to get the job done? Was it going to be a close game? Was Steph going to step like he did at Game 7 last year when he dropped 50 points? No, no, no. Because the Kings had two kids that said, we are playing like grown-ups tonight. Keegan Murray. Keon Ellis playing like absolute dogs. And the Sacramento <laughs> Kings finish the story oh they slay the beast they send the warriors pack and steph clay draymond wiggins cp3 all going home and the kings live on to play another game friday night in new orleans when they take on a pelican team they have not beaten this year kings beat the warriors not only do they beat them, they dominate them 118 to 94. This podcast presented by our friends over at Northwest Exteriors. Check out TrustNorthwest.com. I'm Deuce Mason. That's Morgan Reagan. How you doing, Mo? Fantastic. How are you doing? Fantastic. Driving into Golden One Arena. Or Center. Center. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Golden One Arena. Golden One Center. We're driving in. And Deuce goes, all right, what do we finish like what what do we put on last as our, our last song before we come in? Like we have to be pumped up. Like we're playing the game, right? And he puts on the rock final boss. And I said, No. Put on Cody Rhodes. I don't even like Cody Rhodes. I don't even like Cody Rhodes. No. Put on Cody Rhodes. We gotta finish the story. And it happened. It got us pumped. We were there. We we're ready. Golden One Center was amazing. The energy was absolutely amazing warriors fans going home early early by the way when i say early i'm talking even with like five minutes left when it was just a 20 point game and i'm like i, I have has anyone seen steph curry before i would have not left until it was game over steph curry wasn't on the floor anymore and when steve kerr threw in the white flag i was like oh my god the kings did it they did it out of all the ways i thought this game could go mm -hmm. i thought all right, close game. I could see a close game. Sure. A low-scoring game, a tight game. I could see Steph Curry dominating because we've seen that before. Oh, yes. I could see the Warriors clumping their nose and the season ending. Out of all the possibilities, I did not expect what we witnessed tonight, which was pure and utter domination by the Sacramento Kings. They came out swinging. They played aggressive. The shot-making was there. They were not intimidated. They came out and played a great game from start to finish. Even when the Warriors were on some runs, Steph Curry, three and one, oh no, is it all going to fall apart? No, 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 no. They responded. The Kings responded in every single way. And I, I'm stunned tonight. I, I cannot tell you enough how stunned I am because this is 
worth acknowledging. The Kings are still shorthanded. No Malik Monk, right? No Kevin Herter. Yet opportunity comes when guys are out. And how about the game changer? Keon Ellis, since he has come into the rotation, March 1st at Minnesota has changed things for the Kings. And today we're all wondering, what was Keon Ellis going to do in a game like this? He was going to get open shots. We knew he was going to get open shots. Was he going to pick up two quick fouls? How was he going to respond? How about Keon Ellis? Uh, I was expecting a good game out of him. A good game out of him. If you look down his stat line, I was expecting the three blocks, three steals, like all these hustle plays being made. I was, I don't even know if I was really expecting those numbers. Just even things that he was going to do that weren't going to be on the box score, I was expecting. But he did all of those things, plus adding all these numbers on the box score, the 15 points, the three steals, the three blocks, the five assists, the four rebounds, doing all of the little things. What a special story. But then for him to come up huge, huge, top blocking Steph Curry, making sure he was fighting over every screen and was going to make Steph Curry's life that much more difficult and not getting in early foul trouble. That was going to be one of my biggest fears going into this game because they needed him to be on the floor. They needed him to be big, and he did all of that. The moment wasn't too big for him. And that's what you, again, you worry about these things, right? This He's never been in this situation. Nope. Like, take a step back. This guy was in the G League last year playing for the Stockton Kings. He was on a two-way contract earlier this year, eventually got a guaranteed deal. And it took an injury for him to really get back in the rotation. And since then, he's taken off. But now, as the weeks go on, as he gets more and more comfortable playing, and now playing in these type of moments, a young guy who's playing his first meaningful games in the NBA right now during this stretch, and he doesn't look like he's rattled. This wasn't him going up against some uh, Brandon Pajemski. <laughs> the guy was defending Steph Curry tonight. Yeah. He was yeah. going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the great one. Well, the great one in a win-or-go-home game, in a game that Steph Curry is, his that is his identity. Like, well, you can depend on Steph. You can be down by 20 with three minutes to go. Depend on Steph. You can be anywhere in this game, and you can depend on Steph. But Keon said, oh, no, this isn't going to be the game. You can depend on Steph. Keon Ellis finished with 15 points, five assists, four rebounds, Three steals, three blocks, five of eight shooting. He was three of four from downtown. Mm. The guy played 38 minutes. <laughs> what stood out to you with how he made Steph's life more challenging? Because Steph, obviously, is a great player. He's yes. still going to do his thing. Yeah. But Steph, in this situation, ends the game with 22 points on eight of 16. He had six turnovers in this game. What did he do well against Steph Curry? Keon was... So played so disciplined and what I mean by that I'm talking about all the little things not 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 reaching not getting too handsy or aggressive but still being able to remain physical and play his game like there wasn't even moments that Steph could sell a whole bunch of things because I think Keon played so pure and disciplined Dude. on the defensive end um, I know what you want to say what do I want to say Morgan Keon Ellis, first team all dog. Oh. 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 No. Hey, Morgan, do it. He played like a dog tonight. Give me a little, give me a little Morgan dog. Rough. <laughs> he did not play like that. Rough. No, 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 no. He didn't there was no proper nice Remember dog. Remember, we tried this before oh. and I don't I can't bark. He was incredible. Yeah, do it again. There you go. That was my encouragement. Okay. Keon okay. Ellis dog. He was special. He was so special. And um, we keep talking about the impact defensively he has had throughout the rest of the season when he had to step up in this role. But to have the type of impact that he had tonight when it mattered most, like, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm almost stunned by the way that he was playing tonight. Um, but it wasn't impossible for him to play like that. And he just got to show the world. I mean, everyone that was watching TNT tonight. Yeah, because I can guarantee you, the guys on TNT, you think Shaq, Kenny, and Charles know anything about Keon Ellis before no. tonight? Probably not. 
And now they they saw him play in a moment like this. This was the first chance for probably a lot of NBA fans going, wait, who is who is this guy? Like, he was in the Sacramento series last year. You're right, he wasn't. And to me, when we preview the game last night, that was one thing I mentioned to you was I wasn't as concerned about the defense for Sacramento. I felt like they had some guys to throw at Steph. Yeah. They had Keon. Yeah. They had Keegan Murray, who we'll talk about. <laughs> Stud and a half. Don't ever question Keegan Murray again. Um, so you had Keegan, and I knew you had De'Aaron, what he's done, and uh-huh. then you had Davion. And Davion's hitting a shot, so he's not getting play off the floor. That's four guys. Yep. That's four guys. Last year, when these two teams played in that seven-game series, Keegan Murray was a rookie. He wasn't a good defender. They were picking on him. Who could they pick on tonight? You can't pick on Fox. You can't pick on Keon Ellis. You can't pick on Keegan Murray. Mm. So you go up and down the lineup. It's good luck. They were able to switch well. They were able to try different things, give Steph different looks. It was Keon. It was Keegan. Even De'Aaron a couple of times. They did such a fantastic job on Steph Curry, but this was a game where you needed the others to step up. Fox and Sabonis needed to do their thing, but who else was going to step up? Every starter was huge in this game. They were huge. And even we, we talk about the way that they were able to switch on guys because of the in-game adjustments that even Mike Brown and Jordy were making throughout this game. What I love to see is that how many times did I say, please do not blitz Steph Curry. Please do not let that be your game plan. We know how everyone rotates over. They maybe threw a double at him twice twice and it like caused a turnover and did something else yeah. well and it was just beautiful Why? but i'm just because so glad that they didn't do that the whole game keon ellis and his ability to navigate screens mm-hmm. was fantastic absolutely and and just everyone rotating and even people that understood the importance of hedging stunting a guy well, here's the other thing i want to mention on this yes i think the other thing was steph i think steph was looking at keon and going, I, I can take this one-on-one yeah. matchup. You know what I mean? I think he felt comfortable going, yeah, this is, who's this guy, Keon Ellis? Mm-hmm. Not acting like Steph didn't watch film on the guy, but we have been hyping Keon's defense. You know, fans in Sacramento now have been seeing Keon play defense. We saw him last year play in Stockton. But you know, during an NBA season, the Warriors aren't sitting around watching Keon Ellis tape, okay? No. They got ready for the game tonight. Oh, hey, by the way, just know he's a pretty good defender, deflections. But in Steph's head, he's go, that's Keon Ellis. So I, I don't think they – I think Steph felt comfortable, like, I'm going to go one-on-one with this guy. Deuce and even go to the other end of the floor, what Draymond Green was saying in his podcast the other evening. No, There was no disrespect of what he was saying. He was respecting – everyone on the Kings and what he was talking about when he was breaking down the game, but he was talking about the importance of shutting down the guys, the guys being Domas Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox. And if you can shut down those guys and worry about those guys, then you don't have to worry too much about Keon. You don't have to worry about this. And you did have to worry about Keon on the offensive end, especially tonight, because not only was he getting into the paint, spray three, getting into the paint, creating something else, he was also knocking down his threes, taking good looks, three of four from three-point land. I mean, this is someone that we have seen other teams before come under screen because they just don't game plan for it and then they go oh okay we're screwing up this guy just keeps getting better and better on the offensive end yeah shout out Keon Ellis amazing tonight the next guy start with the other young guy Keegan Murray Keegan Murray in a big game Mm. he led the Kings in scoring 32 points and what's so significant about this in his performance in this game he was doing it while playing defense. He was matched up against Steph in this game. Yeah. He was battling a lot in this game, and he was still knocking down his threes. His three-point shooting has been a little more inconsistent, right? Last year, 40% from three, hit over 200 threes. This year, it's dipped from the corner. Hasn't been good at all after being so elite from the corner last year. He was in corner threes in this game. He was rebounding. He finished this game with 32 points, nine rebounds. He also had two steals. He did on 10 of 20 shooting. Eight of 13 from three-point land. Let's get it. I love Deuce, it was the way that he was shooting from three-point land to start the game. He was setting the tone. Even if he had a little bit of space or it was a more open three, he was knocking it down. I mean, and that's... It, it becomes deflating when guys start to miss those wide open threes, but Keegan was knocking them all down tonight. There was just this different type of fire and energy within him. You could tell with his confidence when he was shooting the basketball from three. And then when he wasn't shooting from deep, 
what else was he doing? He was attacking the rim. He was being aggressive. He was willing to shoot the mid-range shot. And yeah. with it, it was like he was very decisive. He knew where he wanted to go. And if he got to that spot, what he was going to do when he got there. And if it was altered because of the defense, he was going to make the next best decision. Just great decision making by Murray on offense. The the biggest thing still for me is in transition. I do want him to look to attack more. Yeah. I think there are times where he gets a little timid and, you know, he, he lost the ball a couple of times tonight because of that, that Warriors defense swiping down. Draymond's playing physical. He's coming hard for the ball. You got to be strong with it. You got to attack. Don't be afraid of that contact. But this is a step for Keegan Murray. This was a... We, when we did our preview last night too, Morgan, what did we talk about? We talked about, hey, this game for the Warriors and yeah. the meaning behind this game. This game meant everything. This could be the final... Hoorah for this group. Yeah. This is, by the way, they felt like this team was better than last year's. All right. They felt like this team, if they got in, could win a championship. They believed that the chemistry was better. They believed all these things. Well, tonight, in a win or go home situation on the road, they looked like they were tapped out, that they had nothing left. Steph had been dealing with fatigue at the end of the season. He looked absolutely tired yeah. tonight yeah and oh. so that's what makes tonight such a big deal for the sacramento kings yeah you know what you technically haven't done shit right you got to go win another game against sure. a team you have not beaten this year on the road new orleans to yeah. just get in the playoffs but you have to acknowledge that tonight is a huge step especially when two of your young guys are the ones who led the charge in my opinion. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Enjo Acknowledge me. <laughs> Acknowledge it and soak it in and enjoy. And I don't, I don't care that it is just a play in team or just a play in game or whatever you want to call it. It was all the angles going into this. It's the Kings being down bodies and then playing like shit down the stretch of the regular season and getting unfortunately matched up to the Golden State Warriors in a play-in game, in a win-or-go-home game. And the Warriors, up, 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 playing better, 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 better yeah. basketball. The Kings had lost. The Kings not doing so well. Yeah. And the Five of seven. fact that the Kings found the way, all the stories, all the angles going into this game is what makes this win that much more special. Now, if you're a Warriors fan or you're just a fan of the NBA, you're like, ugh, the Warriors are out, Steph Curry is out. I'm so sad, I'm so disappointed. Don't be. If you a real basketball fan, you'll enjoy all the other good style of basketball that you're about to witness. I love the way that the Pelicans play. I know we're not going to get there yet, but I also love the way that Domas and De'Aaron play when they are on and when they are engaged and play in the right way. Shout out to everyone watching us live right now. Let's Look at this go. crowd on a late on a Tuesday night. We're about to be Wednesday morning. Give me a hell yeah. If you have not done it yet, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. All it does is help our channel grow, and we're going to be cranking out content left and right as the Kings continue their journey, their march, to trying to get back in the playoffs for the second consecutive year. Morgan, we've jumped around a lot, and I think we should just we got to go back to even the first quarter, how this game started. It was interesting to see what the Warriors were going to do. They decided to start Trace Jackson Davis tonight. And he had been starting for them, but this is a group that you're wondering, all right, what's he going to look like in a big game? He's been playing well. Are they going to go... And play Looney because Looney was so good last year in that series against the Kings and what he was able to do against Sabonis. Well, they start him. Trace Jackson Davis last seven minutes. We don't see him again until late fourth quarter. But going uh, to the first quarter, I wanted to get your reaction to when Mike Brown decided to use a challenge at the 10.03 mark of the first quarter. It was 8-6. to six. The ball was, they said it went out of bounds off the Kings, and Brown decides to challenge it less than two minutes into the game. The only reason why I was okay with yeah. it, because it was so yeah. obvious. There was nothing that could overturn this, right? Like, unless the refs were just going to try and want the Warriors to win the game. Like, you'd be like, what? Like, something's weird here. It was so obvious that it was off Wiggins that I was like... Yeah, do I, it. Great. Set I the hate tone. it, but whatever. Know, they so won the challenge, else. so it was good. I'm looking back at my first quarter notes too. Uh, you know, they were throwing different looks at De'Aaron Fox in this game. They were trying to throw some blitzes and doubles at him high with like Wiggins and Green at times, and yep. I felt like he just handled it well. He did not panic. How about one of my favorite plays in the entire game? And I knew that's when Fox had something different. This is a moment I knew. Oh, Fox is bringing this shit tonight. What? Harrison Barnes had a miss. Fox oh. came in. 
flew his ass in there. Like he was a rookie in Miami again and had that put back jam early. That those are the plays. That that you are yep. exactly right. Those were the plays that I was going to look for all night long. The extra hustle play, the extra moment to just get up there. Ball was coming off the rim, and he said, uh-uh, I'm putting this shit back in. And it was just such a great moment because it was early on, setting the tone, and nobody putting a body on him and being like, I can be effective in more ways than one. And right there, just a beautiful job by De'Aaron Fox. And then you had a situation early, uh, about halfway through the first quarter, Ellis is isolated, defending Steph Curry, just picks him absolutely clean. It was just beautiful to see. I thought the Kings had some really nice defensive plays. And that's the other thing. We talk about the individuals, Keon and Keegan, to start this game. Yeah. Overall tonight, the defense that has been showing signs of playing some really good basketball since Monk's injury, since before Monk's injury, going back to March, since Keon has been a part of the rotation – it continued in this game, and it wasn't just those two. Sabonis is breaking up alley-oops. I felt like they had the scout down. You know, Draymond loves throwing that lob when they maybe throw a double at Curry or if Curry sees Green rolling, yeah, finds him, and Green loves throwing the lob. They broke that up a couple of times tonight. They did. It was just, I, 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 again, I think it was like, they did their homework. They knew what they needed to do, yep. and they were there. And a lot of a lot of those moments, I'm so used to happening for the Golden State Warriors. And even they play, they they know how to come out in third quarters. They play really well in third quarters. I'm like, okay, what? Not tonight. I, and I was like, <laughs> what are we going to see here? And I was expecting a lot of those moments, just a lot more basketball where they are connected, where they're playing more with their identity and um, figuring out how to break down the Kings' defense. And it wasn't there. And a lot of times, I think it's hard for people to take a step back and go, this Kings defense, solid. Like, solid. Because when it's Steph, Clay, yep. Draymond, you're like, isn't Clay just missing? Isn't Steph just playing a bad game? Isn't this just happening? No. I mean, it. yes and no. It was also the disruption of the Kings defense. So after the first quarter, the Kings led 31-22. to 22. Fox and Keegan played the entire first quarter. Keegan... Started red hot, 14 points, 4 of 7 from 3, 5 of 10 from 3-point land. Sacramento in the first quarter out-rebounded Golden State 16 to 7. That's setting the tone to oh, me. Rebounding yes, yes. in that series last year was so crucial. Huge. The team who controlled the glass, got offensive rebounds, normally won the game. And the Kings destroyed them tonight. Kings in the first quarter had six offensive rebounds in the game, Morgan. Yes. 15 to 8. Well, and really quick, too, think about GP2 not being in there for the Golden State Warriors. To me, his identity of the postseason last year was all of the offensive yep. rebounds. The way that he was hustling in there. No one was putting a body on him in there, uh, on him in the paint. And he created so many different opportunities for the Golden State Warriors with his hustle plays. And not having him in there, it was like the Kings were like, okay, we're going to give them a taste of their own medicine. And they did that. And all that takes is a little extra effort. All that takes is a little extra, like, hey, if someone's not going to do their job and box me out, I'm going to sprint and go. Incredible stuff by the Sacramento Kings tonight. Um, hang on just one second, guys. Take this off. You want to do this? Oh, the we got, we got thumbs oh, up. Hey. Sorry. We're also hey. mic'd up for something else, too. So hey. Hang on a second, guys. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. While we do this, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe and let us know in the chat who you think the player of the game is. Um, let me take your mic and then <laughs> help them out. Uh, we just have a little crew here for fun. Uh, okay. Oh, my God. This Here's is my mic. Hey, thanks. Here's my mic. BR Off you go. Uh, I, I will edit this out of the audio, but while we're here, appreciate you guys being us, being with us live. Uh, the poll question tonight, do you believe? Wow, the voting. Over 1,100 votes tonight. 88% say yes. It's a pretty healthy margin, huh? To 12? That is massive. Yeah, and we get Kings and Pelicans coming up on Friday. I think I'm going to New Orleans for that, so I'll be on the road when we do a live podcast, and hopefully it's a good thing for the Sacramento Kings. Um, Morgan is getting the Carlin situation all handled, uh, so we're going to deal with that before we continue to talk about this game and dive into the greater details of what went down in the second quarter, how the Kings survived. I can't believe I am here 
after a Kings Warriors game in this type of situation. And we are talking more about the Kings defense than anything. Their offense was great tonight. And we'll talk about that because the shooting was massive in this game. But the strides that this group has made defensively is remarkable. And obviously there's some different personnel in there, but it's internal improvement too. One more thing? Yeah, it's internal improvement too. It's De'Aaron Fox having a different type of mentality. Since Mike Brown got that job, he has talked so much about De'Aaron and his ability to defend and how he can be a better defender. He even said the other day at practice, he goes, he's still not where he needs to be. De'Aaron has been more physical and more locked in than ever. This guy is an absolute hawk getting after the ball. This guy isn't, he's a menace. He is everywhere on the night. What did he finish with? He had two steals. I can't wait to look at the deflection numbers tonight because I felt like they were everywhere. So when you've got, hey, Carlin. Hey, what's up, buddy? Carlin's loose. Come here. All right, he's searching. When you've got multiple guys like De'Aaron and Keon out there that are just absolute ball hawks, that are deflection kings, that are going straight after the ball, making the right play, not gambling too much. Dude, that's nasty. And then you bring in Davion off the bench, who may be shorter, but this guy is able to absorb contact, stay with guys, play disciplined and physical defense. Then you add in Keegan Murray and hit someone his size at the wing spot, who you can throw on Steph. Think about that for a second. You have a 6'8 second-year guy playing in this type of game, and you throw him on Steph Curry, and it was fine. The- Keegan Murray is going to be just fine long-term, okay? But seeing what he did, that was big time. I, I was <sighs> all over the place just talking about the defense, Morgan, because I'm just I'm blown away by the defense. Uh, for people who are wondering, we had a, they're watching us. There's a camera person here. We're involved in this project that we can't really talk about at the moment. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. So they were filming some behind-the-scenes stuff. They're gone. Yeah. Thankfully, huh? Oh, my God. Those guys. They're amazing guys. Um, just had to make sure that they were good. But, oh, my God. Just a holy shit, holy shit night for me. And I just, I couldn't wait to celebrate with you and all of you. Because I think all these things that we get to break down is something that, we haven't been able to break down with this Kings team for a couple games now. Well, a lot of games now, right? Where we're looking for that complete game. There's been so many games where it's like, oh, late game execution down the stretch. This sucks. Uh, they didn't do this or they didn't do this or your, or your guys, your main guys didn't step up and do their thing. And tonight, it was like a little bit of everything. Even if De'Aaron was 11 of 25, it was still like he was taking the shots that you wanted him to take. Oh, shit. Deuce is cracking open the beer now. Yeah, I'm going with a little bike dog. Beam team IPA tonight. Ugh, amazing. <sighs> Cheers it, to that shit, huh? It, Cheers. It, oh, it tastes like... Tastes a little beamier? Oh, it tastes 100% <gasps> like beam. Oh, my God. I can... Oh, and let me just say this, too. Yeah. Really quick, you guys. I, like, woke up like I was, like, playing the game today. I was anxious all day. I... Oh, I didn't sleep last night. I told Morgan this. I'm not kidding you. And I wasn't specifically thinking about the game last night. Mm-hmm. I just had a heaviness in my chest. And I was, like, <sighs> I was, like, doing breaths while I was, like, trying to sleep last night. And I woke up going, was I stressed about the game yes, today? Yes, 100% then. And let me tell you, so what else? I, so I was anxious. And then I did little things, like... I had this different hairspray and I'm like, I think I was using this hairspray brand last year instead of this yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah. And so like I used it. And then like I put on this Dusimo uh bracelet that a fan made and gave to us. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put this on today. And then when I was standing up at the NBC set, I had my phone in my right hand and the Kings were playing well, so I kept it in my right hand. The entire game my hand was cramping. My hand was cramping. Yeah, I that's was what I had to do with nothing like uh Keon Ellis, Keegan. Fox, okay, but, but you know how you know how I know. people even came up to you before the game and were like, every time I have a good feeling about it, or every time I think the Kings are going to win, they lose, so I'm just not going to have a feeling. And it's like, it doesn't work that way. But the energy in the building was like belief. Everyone believed. It was, it was different. And then the, yeah. the Warriors were deflated, and even that felt different. That was something I'm not used to witnessing for freaking quarters for the Warriors. <sighs> 
you know, it's a shame that we had to wait so long to, to start the podcast uh, tonight. And I'm sorry that we're recording so late, but yeah, because I I felt like I was at a different level a while ago. You're probably going, dude. You were shooting fog in the air. You're, you're fine, dude. <laughs> but well, we had an I, hour I just you know show. it's this year has been so tough for the Kings yes. at times with the adversity, with the injuries, with the inconsistency. We've talked ev- all about it, right? And then what happened last year was tough, losing to the Warriors. And although this is you know, not the ultimate goal of getting back to the playoffs and playing a seven-game series. They have to win Friday in New Orleans. Seeing them win a game like this against the Warriors is just the growth I saw tonight, not only from the young guys, from De'Aaron, yep. from Damanis Sabonis and his physicality and not backing down. Yep. I loved everything about it. And I, I was just, I walked away. I even texted more. I said, I am just proud of Keon Ellis. I am just... I'm tonight, tonight, I am just proud of this team because they did not fold. And they this last, like, 10 days, dude, we've all felt it. Them losing leads to the Knicks, that was tough. Losing that lead to OKC, losing in the final minute to the Suns, we're just pulling our hair out going, how can this team, like, collapse like this? And it feels like they're trying to figure out ways to win in this new fashion with some new pieces and guys playing enhanced roles that some weren't even in the rotation at some point. Yeah. So I leave tonight proud. That that moment that you text me, and I brought it up, but it was just basically just, I'm so proud of Keon. And I just thought that was, it was genuine. It was sweet. The game was nowhere to be over at that point. And I was like, I even wrote back, no matter what happens in this one, I'm just so happy for him. And I think I'm happy for him not only because of what he was able to accomplish on the biggest stage. And it's like not a fluke. It wasn't like, oh, one big game from Keon. It's like, no, it is what he can be going forward, what he can develop truly into. And having this type of experience, like you said, in such a big game is what I ultimately want for these kings i said it going into this game tonight i was like you know what either way i want a competitive game how what whatever the outcome is even if steph curry hits a dagger at the end of this one i want i know i want a competitive basketball game because i want them to feel and learn something new from this play and experience and they did more than that the second quarter was a little rocky but again this is where we talk about the Kings playing this type of defense. And I think this was also a favorable matchup for them too to take on this Warriors team where Trace Jackson Davis, who had not been, who had been playing well, played the seven minutes and was like done. They went small, which helped them mm-hmm. a lot in the second quarter. They go, they tried, they tried to put Looney out there. It just wasn't great. So they end up going small and Kaminga really got it going. And they started to really oh. target in the second quarter. The Kings couldn't make shit. And then toward the end of the second, Kaminga tried to get Sabonis switched on him. And he was really having his way with Sabonis. That's a tough matchup for him. And so the Warriors end up cutting the lead. It gets down to eight. And by the half, it's 54 to 50 Sacramento. Golden State, even though they got back in the game, they outscored Sacramento 28-23. So not like a crazy number. But Sacramento in that quarter shot eight for 26. Last year, if the Kings, earlier this year, if they shot eight for 26 in a mm-hmm. quarter, they're done. They're not even in the game. Yep. So in some ways, I was like, this feels like kind of a win that they shot this poorly in the second quarter and they're still like up, but they were up at si- by 16 at one point. So you felt kind of weird. And also... You had at the half Curry, Clay, and Wiggins combined for ten points. I was so I felt mixed at the half. Where were you thinking at the half? Wait, who Curry, Clay, and Wiggins combined for ten points in the first half of this game? Yes, Clay. You're not listening. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I know it's late. Curry, yeah. Clay Thompson and Wiggins combined for ten points. Okay, got it. Five for Steph at the half. 
five for Wiggins, zero for Clay. God. Ten points. <laughs> That's what I would say. It was just like, with Clay being at zero, I'm like, wait, but he didn't have any. So That's I the was, point. I... The point that those three combined for ten points. You had to break that one down for me for some reason. I was like, are you sure about this, Deuce? I completely understand that now. Um, so at the half, it's 54 to 50. And yeah. I just mentioned the, those numbers. Were you, how were you feeling at the half? Were you feeling like, oh, they're back in it? Oh, yeah. What was your vibe like? That, because all I was thinking is, okay, Warriors, they're a good third quarter team. I go, we haven't seen anything yet. I kept believing in the Warriors because you guys, track well, record, track record shows. And their bench was really good in that stretch too. Uh, in the first half, they outscored Sacramento 29 to eight. That, okay. Nice even points. All, all of the, all of the things, all of the things. And even Steve Kerr willing to go to Looney, willing to make those in-game adjustments as well. And then even seeing Kaminga starting to get things going and everything. I was just like, or that, I guess that happened later. But, but even with anyone just starting to get anything going, I was just waiting for them to have more and more moments because we have seen that how many times with this Golden State Warriors team? And I just felt like with that being the score at the half, it didn't, the Kings didn't let it bother them. It didn't rattle yeah. them. That's, and that's because something we were, haven't seen. I, and I think it's because they were playing the right way. They were missing some shots. And the Warriors made some good defensive plays too. I thought, you know, I thought Draymond had some really strong moments stripping i think what he end up with like three steals in this game but oh i felt God. like defensively he did some really nice things and they were making life tough the small lineup and you're gonna see teams do it you may see new orleans do it coming up on friday if zion doesn't end up playing in that game the Suns have done that against sacramento and there's been some success so we go in the second half and Kerr goes, we're not starting Trace Jackson Davis they start kaminga in the second half they put draymond at the five and they go small thinking that's going to end up working again. Dude, Sacramento was spectacular in that third quarter. The defense, the shot making, I thought they just, they all scored them. They had 37 points in the third quarter. My God. That was so. And they, you know what else they fought? What? In that third quarter, I felt like they were fighting through. No, there was no whistles from the officials in that third quarter. They were letting them play. There were some times you're going, how are you not calling this? Like, Fox had a drive, and I think Draymond just hammered him. They swallowed the whistle. The Kings didn't let that shake them. Fox got frustrated and just fouled Curry hard yep. at one point, but I was fine with that. He was sending a message like, see that? That's Call it on that end. Yep, yep. Call it on that end. I'm cool with that. They did not cower down. They weren't bitching to the officials. They got up and they kept playing, and they embraced the playoff physicality. I was really afraid that was going to be one of the stories of this game. I was afraid that it was going to be Keon Ellis getting in foul trouble because, you know, every Steph selling a call, CP3, you know, manipulating a call, whatever it is. And by the way, when I say that about those two guys, it's also a skill set to be able to play the way that they do and to get those type of calls. Like, I, I mean, that's what star players are able to do. And then on the other hand, like we've seen over and over again, Sabonis gets, you know, knocked left and right. Sabonis also throws a lot of shoulders and elbows at times that don't get called. I saw him and Looney kind of just, like, really being physical with one another, and it felt like neither one of them were ever getting the call. Only when it was, like, a Draymond combined in there and, like, they called, like, the Sabonis well, push in the back on I'm him. I'm going to tell you this. What? There were times Sabonis, he does this where he gets hit and he falls to the ground to sell the call. He got bumped today. He stayed with it and got second chance opportunities because of it. Yep. The Kings won this game because of their defense, the second chance opportunities. Those are backbreaking. The Kings were on the other side of that against the Warriors last year with all the offensive rebounds. Tonight, they were the ones getting those offensive rebounds, getting the lucky bounces, diving on the floor, making shit happen. Yes. Sabonis played like a dog tonight. Sabonis was playing physical. He was yep. punching. He was like, I'm not backing down. I'm not scared. I, there was sometimes I felt like he could have had the mid-range. I asked Sabonis today about that too. Before Did you? I, I've been pre at shoot around today. I'm just like, you know, you, they're going to give you that shot. You went 4-4 four four against Portland. Were, are you feeling more confident with it? And his thing is like, no, I'm confident with it. I'm just making the right read. Yeah. And tonight it felt like he was making the right read. 
I thought he had some looks, but he was looking at Keegan, and he felt like he had Keegan coming off dribble handoffs. He was going to get him the ball, he and was, it worked. Yeah, I, I love the way that he was also being super decisive with the basketball. I think there was maybe three times where I was like, ooh, a couple more dribbles than you needed, trying to do something that you shouldn't have done. But lately, it feels like there was way more possessions like that uh, toward the end of the regular season. So it was nice to see that he's making those quick decisions. And then, Deuce, you're exactly right, going back to some of the calls and everything. Just being able to play through it and not allow it to take yep. you out of the game mentally. You're one of the leaders on the team. And if you can do that, it's going to be contagious. It's going to spread throughout. And I felt like it really did because that is one of the worst things that can happen to any team when your star players get taken out of it because a team is being super physical with them. I mean, we're it's playing and it's not postseason oh, well it technically is postseason it's it not post. it's yeah, postseason yeah. it's not playoffs it's play in and we still know that the officiating is going to be different in that it's going to be a lot like more you're allowed to be more physical the game's going to be well, a little bit different and that's what it was and what i tell you going into this game what I love how I ask you, like, oh, uh, you told me, yeah, Mr. Deuce, you yeah. told me. Like, you're a student, I'm a yeah, teacher. Okay, um, yeah. <laughs> I told you before this game that in some ways, it's almost good that the King, so one, the experience last year in that seven-game series, I think helps you in moments like this. But in this lead-up to the end of the season, even though the Kings kind of limped down the stretch, they had those big leads in New York. They they matched that physicality. In OKC, Phoenix, they had to deal with New Orleans when they lost that game. They were playing other teams who were fighting for something. Those games were physical. Yeah. Those teams played physical. And now with how the game's being called since the All-Star break, and now you're into the postseason, it's even more physical I think the Kings have embraced it. I think Fox has embraced that shit. Sabonis plays it like that. Keon does. And so when you have guys embracing it and you've been doing it now for like two weeks, there's no switch that has to be hit. Mm -mm. You're not like rattled by, oh, wait, this is more physical right yeah. now. No, you've been living it for two weeks. And so this was good to see the Kings come out and embrace it. They punched. They were physical. Loved it. Yeah. You needed Sabonis to play well tonight. He was awesome. You needed Fox to play well. He was fantastic. Who else was going to step up? It was going to have to be a total team effort. They played eight guys tonight. Everyone had moments in this game where they contributed, and that was a big deal tonight. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, that's it. It, it, the resiliency, everyone understanding that with the bodies down, I think even Keon said this after the game, like, you know, like the train keeps going just because you lose a few, whatever, like the train, like you got to keep going. And it's so true. It's not like they see them. They don't see themselves as a whole different NBA team just because they lose some key pieces. They still, they see themselves just as good as anyone else. You know, whether you believe that or not, that's how they view themselves. And tonight, that's what they look like. That confidence just truly beamed through for them. But on top of all that, sometimes like I feel like this isn't real talking about this. Really thinking that Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors aren't going to the playoffs, and they have Draymond Clay and Steph Dude. and CP3 on their team, and they've been playing good basketball. And the Sacramento Kings, who lost to them in a seven-game series last year, beat them in a win-or-go-home game without some of their main guys. Like, what? This is so great. I'm just super happy. <laughs> I do feel a little disrespected right now. By who? The live people. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I know it's after midnight. Yeah. I know it's late. We're in the Wednesday now. I see over 1,200 people watching us live right now. 464 thumbs up. <laughs> I'm sorry. The easiest thing you can do right now is hit the thumbs up. It doesn't cost you a dime to hit the thumbs up. All it does is help our channel grow. So please hit the thumbs up. That should be at like 800. Oh. Hit the thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed so you know what we're doing and all the content that we're going to be putting out left and right as this playoff chase marches Oof. on. Appreciate you guys being here. Give me a hell yeah. Playoff chase. Dude, it's so hard to keep up with the chat, but I see some of the OGs in there. I see Boost. I see Larry David. Appreciate you open mic. Hamburger Dads. That's was on was accident. Like, what happened? No breaking news <laughs> at this hour. KO's there. Ooze, JC, thank you guys so much. What's up, Hacks? Appreciate you guys so much for being here. Late. 
to talk about this. Um, okay, third quarter. We talked about how good that quarter was for Sacramento. Um, it was 86-73 at the 221 mark. They take Curry out, and you're, all right, you're feeling pretty good. Just keep building this. Uh, my key was you needed a lead by double digits headed into the fourth quarter. I didn't want it to get close. The moment that gave me a little bit of worry, a couple of moments, when Curry hunted Sabonis, got called for his fourth foul at the 647 mark, Uh huh. Brown decides to keep him in the game. Yep. And I'm I I am losing my mind. Of course you. I'm are. I'm like, put Trey Lyles in the game. I actually wanted to see them play some small ball five tonight, especially in that situation. It's worked before. The Warriors weren't having bigs playing like they were going small. Like play Trey Lyles and go at these guys. Um, he gambled and he left Sabonis in for a little bit. It paid off, so that was okay. But then late in the game, as it, it, the, the Warriors start chipping away, we're we're talking about the final seconds here. Wiggins gets fouled by Alex Len, who's in the game. He had to close out, and then there's like a long delay. You're waiting. You're like, are they going to review this? They're going to review this? Really? Well, they go and review it. It's a flagrant foul. Mm-hmm. So you're going, wait, wait. They get three shots and the ball. What I will say, Alex Len was in his landing space, and I, that is super dangerous, and, and I... I get it. You know what I mean? I just I just want to make sure we're not denying that that actually happened. Oh, but and what th- I, thanks for letting but me know. But what I will say, what happened before that, Trey, Ly- or Trey Lyles was being grabbed by Draymond Green on that screen yeah. that Andrew Wiggins was, was coming. So they review it. They go, it's a flagrant foul. It's a flagrant foul, and he gets three shots, and the Warriors get the ball. It's 91-75 at that point. The worst case scenario that I'm going is, well, Wiggins is going to make all three. Now it's 91-78. And there's still 5.6. Oh if God. Steph hits a three, uh-huh. and now it's cut to like 10, uh-huh. it's a game, and they've got all the momentum. Wiggins misses the first two free throws. Uh. He makes the second. All right, well, shit. All right, 91-76. Do not allow a made shot here. It could feel like a backbreaker. Dude, Steph Curry is being hounded, gets the ball, of course, because it's Steph. Keon Ellis blocks his shot at the end of the third quarter. Oh, And it just felt soul-sucking. At that moment, I'm like, dude, the Kings just dodged the ultimate bullet. It, it, bullet. it could have been a six-point swing, mm-hmm. and it ended up a flagrant foul on a three-pointer turned into one point. And not only that, uh, Steph was already sitting out with 221 left or whatever it was. And so when there they was... They brought him back in for that. They brought yeah. him back in for that possession. And the fact that he was hounded, yep. it reminded me of that time when De'Aaron Fox was hounded at the end of that Suns game and Bradley Beal might have hit his arm yeah. or whatever it came across. But, you know, De'Aaron Fox lost it. And it was like right there, Steph Curry, just great defense was being played by these three guys. Keon Ellis gets some of the basketball i'm blown away by keon ellis i know i am absolutely just floored by what he did in this game tonight and it's what a stud just magic and you know it looks like the kings found something special i mean is there any doubt that this guy is going to be a big piece going forward for this group uh speaking of keon ellis do you want to hear his post-game interview with the g-man sure you probably haven't heard that. so i think keon is on with us okay i got you yep 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 okay thank you sir i was just saying no (laughs) Well, we've been bragging on you a lot tonight, young man. And for the fact that you were undrafted coming out of Alabama, the fact that you were a two-way designated player, the fact that you were upgraded in February to a legitimate standard NBA contract, living in this moment, delivering in this moment with just a terrific stat line, how satisfying is this win for you in your journey to more stardom in the future? Um, It feels great. Uh, honestly, I, I, I really can't put into words like how, how crazy it is I'm it, I don't think it's hit me yet and and I think I've just got so used to you know just just taking the game as it is and as it comes so um but I know it's something great but I mean right now you know I'm just trying to just stay locked in you know we still got to get another win and you know we still got to see how things play out so but I mean definitely a great game tonight so um you know definitely the things that I, I dreamed of for sure has there been anybody that's helped mentor you and bring you to this stage who's encouraged you and has been maybe a confidant who's helped steer you along this path? Um, everybody. But, I mean, uh, you know, as, as I go out there with different lineups, you know, guys are, are steadily, 
you know, giving me confidence. But, but, but one guy that probably stands out for sure is Malik. You know, he's, he's going to be the first one to, to criticize me when I do something stupid and be the first one to, <laughs> to applaud me when I do something great. So, you know, he's, he's definitely been, been really good for me. You know, he, he's always on me. You know, if, if I'm doing good, he wants me to do better. If I'm doing bad, you know, he'll cuss me out and, you know, say his speech. <laughs> but, um, you know, I love him. You played almost 39 minutes tonight. I want to read you the stat line because we've been so impressed about the balance across the board. 15 points, four rebounds, five assists, three steals, three block shots. Any of those numbers in particular give you great satisfaction? Uh, the, the, the steals and the blocks, I mean, those, are, those aren't easy to come by. So, you know, when you, when you, get, when you rack up steals and blocks, you know, that, especially for me, um, that's, that's something I love. How about the atmosphere in this winner go home situation tonight in this building? Oh my God, I, I need it again in the first round. <laughs> well, it's going to be different because it's going to be life on the road in New Orleans, and yep. we all know yep. how tough they've been. Back. We owe that team something, right? We do, we do. It's got to get done. Keon, thank you so much. Congratulations on this moment. May it live long in your memory, but may it only be a small step toward much bigger things. Yes, in the sir. Future. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. Okay, first of all, how cute is G Man? I mean, uh, can just, you keep that forever? I just want, I want, Keon, you should give that to Keon. Yeah, that's Gary Gerald, the longtime radio voice at the Sacramento Kings, who has called Sacramento Kings games for 39 years. All of the seasons they've been in Sacramento talking with Keon Ellis. And yeah, it felt like a special moment tonight. It really did. And just so cool. And th this is why I love sports. I said this when Keon was first getting the opportunity. Because you can't predict this shit, okay? <laughs> There's no way that before the season would be like, hey, dude, Kings Warriors going to play again? It's going to be in a play in 9-10. And you know who the two big stars are going to be in this game? Keon Ellis and Keegan Murray. You'd be like, oh, it's cool, hot take, nice. You can't predict it. And that's what makes this fun. We spend so much time analyzing the game and talking about moves and, oh, they didn't make this trade, they didn't do this. Dude, Keon Ellis being converted to a guaranteed contract is one of the biggest moves that was made yeah. over the trade after the trade deadline. Yeah. And it took an opportunity like this for him to thrive. It, it's, I think that's what else makes it so special is that when you see someone really, really understand the importance of an opportunity yeah. and make a certain type of impact like we are seeing from Keon Ellis. I mean, the amount of people during the regular season talking about, wait, your defense, it's so much better. Yeah, because the perimeter defense, the resistance up there became that much better, which can make an entire team defense that much better and can set a tone and can be contagious. And that is what this undrafted player in Keon Ellis did. And which, by the way, I still remember saying when he was in the G, like, you know, I don't know if he's going to be aggressive enough and his game will translate in the NBA. Like, defensively, we know what he can do. But, like, offensively, will he be able to be a, a guy that you could go to? He's, he's more than that. He plays discipline. He's reliable. He, I mean, his energy, his mentality, his composure – all the damn things. Just a special night. Yeah. Special, special night. Um, so the Kings end up having that big quarter, 37 points in the third. Uh, something that is worth mentioning, too. Sacramento did not allow a 30-point quarter by the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors shot, they scored 22 in the first, 28 in the second, 26 in the third, mm. and the Kings held them to 18 in the fourth quarter. Curry started the fourth quarter out there with CP3, Pajemski, Green, and Kaminga. And this was all while Fox and Keegan were just chilling on the bench. And the Kings just expanded the lead. And um, after Keegan and HB had back-to-back -back three, mm. Steph Curry stepped out of bounds. It was 105, what, 86 at that point? And you felt like, oh, my God, is this really happening? I still wasn't there yet because it felt like there's still time. Like, you had a call there. You know? Same. Even when people yeah. were, Warriors fans were leaving, I was like, yeah. have you, you, you're giving up? Like, Steph isn't giving up yet until they gave up. So, Kings obviously hold on. And they just absolutely run away with this game, 118 to 94. And... There was a wave of emotion that went over me when I looked down. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, 
Kerr's waving the white flag. He's putting his bench in. Yep. You know, he went to the deep bench and was like, it's up, it's done. And you went, wait, are, they're, they're really beating this team? There's no way anyone thought this game was going to go like this. Even nope. if you're the biggest Kings homer on the planet. Hell, people call us homers all the time. I don't think the game was going to go like this. Nope. It was incredible. Um, but, you know, we, we've spent so much time time talking about Keegan and Keon. De'Aaron, Morgan. This guy's a star, man. And mm. he had finished with 24 points. He had six assists, 11 of 25 shooting, two steals. He was aggressive. He got to his spots. He was attacking. They were throwing. That's the other thing. We have to acknowledge that... Th- the way teams are going to defend them mm-hmm. is they're going to pack the paint, focus on Fox and Sabonis. Yeah. That did not mess with him tonight. No. He got blitzed. He got thrown double teams, different looks. Played so smart. So he played great. so so, cool, great. so decisive. I, I was so impressed with his ability to turn it on like that. And when I say that, like we've seen him turn it on with his speed, with his skill set, but mentally yep. to take it to another level of understanding of being able to be like, can I depend on all of you? And Keegan's like, I, hi, I'm here. You can, de- you can depend on me tonight. I'm good. And it was like, great. Thanks. That's what I needed to see. And I'm sorry to interrupt. Interrupt. You, Morgan. Interrupt. Oh show it. My show God. it now. So Keon Ellis won defensive player of the game. Did we see the pose he did? Show it now. <laughs> now. He did the night, night, night night. Oh my God. Keon Ellis with the defensive player of the game crowd. And he's on the throne where he belongs because tonight he's the king of kings. Given the night night. That's a heel move though. That's not the Cody Rhodes. The American nightmare would never. Oh, I love that shit. Oh shit. Okay, um, that on. wasn't the only cool thing. Oh, just what? Re- re- real fast, we'll get back to your point. Okay. I did want to show this. Uh, shout out to my best friend, one of my best friends, Scott Aww. Freshour, the longtime MC of the Sacramento Kings, the best in the business. This candid shot with Steph right in the front. He's in the background jumping, doing the night night too. We were dropping night nights everywhere. Sleep tight, warriors. I saw people doing that in the stands. I'm like, it's so funny because I'm definitely, I'm not a good shit talker because I I was like, no, no, we don't need to do that. And then I look, I look at this section where my parents are and it's in the the exit cam is being shown on the big screen. And I see my parents, little petty (laughs) assholes waving, waving like to the, to the warriors and bye, bye. And I'm like, Oh Oh, my God. That is amazing. They're and they're such sweet people. But I'm like, everyone was just feeling that energy. And I'm like, you know what? Everyone deserves to do that tonight. Do yes. it. Don't act like you've been there before and because you haven't. Scott Fresh Hour, real fast. One of the greatest people ever. Yep. And for Kings fans who maybe have not been to a game, maybe you watch him on League Pass, or if you've been to a game, he's the MC. He's the guy in the fourth quarter that gets everyone juice before the game. He is so good at his job. It's easy to get people up in a game like this, but this guy was getting people up in the fourth quarter when the Kings are down 20, when they're winning 22 games in a yep. season. He has brought it all the time, and so I just love that he gets these opportunities in big games to show off what makes him special. One more thing yeah. that was and so... And I do want to get back to your point on Fox. So. I, I do too, but one more thing that I thought was so fun and exciting, this is when Andrew Wiggins was missing. He missed the first free throw. He missed the second, and that's Brad Miller getting the crowd up. He's behind the basket. Brad Miller's getting the crowd up going, let's make him miss the third. Just like hype man city over there, down there by the court. It was so fun to see. Everyone Amazing. was just in it. You could feel it. So now, from the pettiness to the heel moves, back. To De'Aaron? To De'Aaron Fox. Dude, De'Aaron. De'Aaron Fox, like I said, just playing smart, decisive, all those different things. But although he was missing shots, it didn't feel like it was this bad offensive game from him because he was still being aggressive, getting to his spots and being like, I still have to continue to play my game and shoot the shots that I would take. And what it did allow was was second chance opportunities on some of his bounces, you know, whatever, some of his weird misses or whatever. But also it just 
allowed the Kings to keep on that same identity of their good style of basketball, right? And it didn't, they didn't have to go away from it. Fox wasn't just chucking up a whole bunch of threes. He finished two of eight from beyond the arc. And I know that, but that's, that's like his number it's of fine. what he's been he's, doing. He's been taking those, that many threes and he shot them at a decent rate this year. Right. Um, I loved everything about his game because my thing with Fox is I need you, De'Aaron, to bring it defensively every single night. And he's done this. I think he's got a legit case for all defensive team this year. It's positionless. I don't know if he'll get the votes. We'll find out. And he was asked about that the other day after practice. And he's like, well, most guards, most point guards, they are getting targeted. And he doesn't get targeted. Like, you don't want that. That was something I mentioned to you last night in our preview. I was like, hey, I think they put De'Aaron on Draymond. And that's what they did, Uh right? Because it gives the Kings so much more flexibility if they're trying to go with Draymond setting the screen. Well, Fox is going to switch on the Curry. That's fine. Yeah. And that, that totally worked out. That is such a weapon. And he is such, he is so engaged right now. I also thought, from a defensive standpoint, but I also thought offensively tonight, I like that he was making it a point to get to the mid-range. It's like, that shot was going to be there. Like, get to your mid-range. That's your shot. You can take it. There's nothing wrong with it. Attack the paint. I want you to attack the paint for sure. Take your threes, but don't neglect the mid-range. It's not, mid-range should not be off limits to you. I thought his all-around game was fantastic. I I loved it. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to... Talk negatively about anyone tonight. I felt like the Kings brought it at every single level. I know Trey Lyles didn't play some major minutes in this game, but dude, he had some great contests at the rim. I remember when Kaminga was driving, the guy got big at the rim, forced a miss. Fantastic yeah. stuff, but sorry, I'm all over the place. No, it's- De'Aaron Fox played like a star tonight. He did. And that's, we said, and everyone else did, if him and Domas played like stars, then the Kings were going to have this chance to win this basketball game. And it, being a star wasn't even necessarily having a 40-point game. It was just well, making you, he sure. He got help. And he, it was just making sure yeah. that his whole team was going to play better tonight. And by De'Aaron Fox playing a good style of basketball, it the it's going to bleed in to the rest of the team, and then the rest of the team understood what they needed to do um, and make an impact on the offensive end, especially when it came to scoring. I mean, I'm looking at his his shot chart right now. I mean, he had three makes right around the free throw line tonight, and he took five at the free throw line. So three for five right around the free throw line mid range, and right stepping right inside the circle uh, below the free throw line, he had a few there. Yeah, it's great, and yeah. the pain's going to be tough for him right now. It's going to be tough with how the, how teams defend him. And I thought the other thing that the Kings did a good job of, real fast too, just to add on with Fox, they didn't do a good job of this in the first half, but in the second half, go at Curry. He can't defend. He yes. can't defend. He, and they started to go at Curry on the other end, and I love seeing it. Fox blew by him. And what it would what would happen too is that then if the Warriors had someone else in help, it allowed the Kings to create something off yeah. of it. There was someone open. There was a spray three. There was movement. There was just just great decisions being made. Quick decisions. One thing that I want to add on to all the positives that we keep talking about. Can we give love to the free throws, baby? 14 wow. and 15. I didn't realize that. Come on now. Because there's so many good things. Well, some quick math. 93.3% at the free throw How line. How do you know that? I just did the math in no, my head. Didn't. I'm really good at it. The Warriors were 18 of 23. That's that's 70 point, 78.3, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. Oh. Uh, Sacramento, 93.3% at the free throw line tonight. 14 of 15 at the free throw line. So, that was great um, for Sacramento. Um, Sabonis. Yeah. I think we hit on him a little bit earlier. I'm just glad he didn't back down tonight. They played physical with him. Draymond was trying to beat the hell out of him. They threw different looks at him. They went small at him. They threw everything at him. He finished with 16 points. He had 12 rebounds. He had seven assists, seven of 14 shooting. 0 for one from three. He did take a three, but missed it. Two of two at the free throw line. Uh, he also had two steals in this one. He broke up some lobs at the rim. I thought he had some really nice defensive moments. What jumped out to you about? Do Montes Abonis. Do Montes Abonis. Do Montes Abonis. 
what jumped out? Jesus. He turned red. Um, just how aggressive that he remained. I, I mean, and again, talk about another player, just like De'Aaron Fox making quick de- decisions, being disciplined, all those things that we didn't see him do at the end of regular season, not allowing teams to just collapse on him and then go, oh, no, what do I do with the basketball? He was able to do a much better job creating for others. Seven assists for him tonight. Um, 12 rebounds. I think he only had one offensive rebound, which is just crazy to see that the Kings had 15 offensive boards and it wasn't the le- the leading rebounder in the league. God, I love that. With those That's offensive my rebounds. Stats. Yes, it was just everyone else being like, okay, Domas is getting boxed out. How can we um, get in there and help? So that was great, but he still finished with 12 rebounds, doing a great job there. But I just love the way that he would make decisions either battle through someone's body and if he wasn't going to battle through someone's body he was going to just put the ball on the ground see what he could do make a spin move okay he tried shooting what maybe four mid-range shots we can take a look at the shot chart but either way it was like he he looked to shoot that that mid-range shot he wasn't confident with it but i'm glad yeah, that he, he took, still looked at it he he was 0 for 4 on mid-range go. shots uh three of them came right at the free throw line one came on um, the right elbow that he missed. But yeah, so he did take him. So he didn't back down, which is great to see on that. The other key stat that the chat's pointing out because they are basketball minds just like Deuce Mason. Oh, what you got? One turnover <gasps> from Demonis Sabonis. Oh, that. taking this, care of the basketball. This guy can get illegal screens. That's a turnover. He could throw it away. He's not strong with the ball sometimes. Mm-hmm. That could cause issues. One turnover. The two guys that were a little sloppy were the guys who gave love, Ellis and Murray. Those guys got to be stronger with the ball. Keon had a really nice defensive play, went the other way, turned the ball over. Be locked in. Be confident. Those guys have to remain confident. But I thought Sabonis was was great tonight. And yeah. um, I was really happy that in this type of game that he showed up in a major way. Agreed. Um, I thought all eyes were going to be on him in this game. And he responded big time. The last starter, Harrison Barnes. Harrison in the second half was great. At the half, I think he was one of five. He finished his game with 17 points, four rebounds, three assists. One of my favorite plays of the game. Mm-hmm. Do you do you have any idea what the play would be? Um, he hit no. the three, which was really nice. Okay. He was being really physical going at Draymond Green. Draymond like must have fouled him like three times. <gasps> Here's how it's Big contact. Green on Barnes. Barnes shakes, trying to create a step back, and he scores it. Boy, you talk about earning a bucket. Steve Kerr will take time out. Harrison Barnes with just a magnificent effort. Mason Jones races out from the bench to be the first to congratulate him as the Kings extend the lead to 97-78. That put the Kings up. 19 at the point. Aggressive. Pole. A gr- he went at Draymond, yep. and you know, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, for Harrison, that felt extra good. Hell yeah, it did. Right? Draymond does mm-hmm. a lot of yapping. He's done a lot of yapping about HP over the years. He went right at the guy. They went right at him, and he got that tough bucket. Yeah. Love seeing him be aggressive in this game. I thought he was aggressive in the first half. He missed yes. shots. In the second half, he stayed aggressive, knocked down threes. Harrison Barnes is really good in this one. How many times have we seen him just out there invisible? Yeah. And people get so frustrated. He has these moments, and to have this type of moment in this big of a game, there's something else that just drives him when it's the Golden State Warriors, I feel like. And tonight, he stepped up big, understanding what the Kings were lacking in bodies and what he needed to contribute. Um, I I loved it. 34 minutes, 34 minutes, three of four from three point land. Some of his threes yeah. too are just, have just been so smooth lately. Um, not just chucking them up, taking some really good ones, some really good looks. There were some really, really pretty shots that were being taken on the offensive end by the Kings. I felt like the way that they were moving around the basketball was just so much better than what we saw towards the end of the regular season. I thought, you know, we've heard this so often this year. It's like, you got to get the paint touches, spray out for three. Mm -hmm. The Kings did that in this game. I mean, they were fantastic. They were 18 of 39 from three-point land. That is 46% from three, Morgan. They made the defense 
shift from left to right. Yep. They made the defense collapse. You know, whether it was De'Aaron Fox or Keon Ellis or Keegan Murray, whoever it was that was being aggressive. I just, again, they were playing fundamental basketball, a style of basketball that we have we have seen be successful. And it's like, you can do this. So do it again in this next game coming up, huh? And I think it's because their defense, right? When you get stops, when yes. you're causing havoc out there, it it's a big deal. Sacramento had 10 steals in this game. Mm. That's a big number, in, including, um, wow, four of your five starters had at least two steals. Two from Fox, three from Keon Ellis, two from Sabonis, two from Murray. You also had one off the bench from Trey Lyles. But also, you know me, I'm big on deflections. Sacramento had 16 deflections in this game. Keon Ellis had five of them. <laughs> this guy's unbelievable. Jeez. Uh, Demonis Sabonis had four deflections in this game. Keegan had two. De'Aaron Fox had three deflections. And Alex Len had a couple of two. That, again, Alex Len, even the small amount of minutes that he yep. played, what, nine minutes? And just his presence being fe- felt and getting deflections, just being a big body out there, just giving a different look, giving Sabonis a little bit of time. The Kings end up only playing eight guys. Also, didn't you feel like Kings played eight guys and they were like, we're growing with this. I know it's working for them too, but like, dude, Steve Kerr was searching. When he's going Trace Jackson Davis in the first seven minutes, doesn't play him again and then the fourth quarter he puts him back in the game and you're like dude you look like you're a mess right now he he went loony he was like oh let's go small let's go Kaminga out there I thought Moody gave him some nice moments Kaminga too but they their guys didn't right when Clay Thompson finishes 0 for 10 Mm. zero points Mm. the first time he is scoreless in a game since 2012 did you just hear me yeah the That's- first time he has scoreless in a game that he has started since 2012. And it's wild because he's been shooting well lately. Him and Steph yeah. in this last month making so many threes. And for him Dude. to go 0 for 6 from three-point land and then 0 for 10 from the field, uh, of course, it's what you love to see. And, of course, you go, okay, wasn't just all of the Kings defense. A lot of it had to do with disrupting his game, but a lot of it too. He was just out of a He looked out, off. Well, Clay when he get when he is off, man, sometimes he it, is just off. He gets in then, his head yeah. and then, you know, Kerr pulls him. He just looked like a mess. He looked like the Clay that we saw at stages earlier this year when he was just in his own head. Yeah. And yeah, it's I'm not trying to pile on too, because I know we've done a lot of petty stuff tonight. It, I get this that, but like this isn't petty. Clay, Clay had a rough night. Yeah. Clay is a great player, and like let's just be called the way it is. At some point, the run ends, right? Some point, the run ends. The Kings, I can tell you, yeah. felt like last year, early in that series when they're up two zero going to San Francisco. They felt like they had the Warriors on the ropes. They 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 believed at that point they were the better team. They weren't able to get it done. They win that big game six there. They get game seven at their place. They think they can get it done. They did not. And they felt like the Warriors were on the ropes then, especially with all the chaos with Poole and Green and everything and Wiggins being away from the team. This year it was different for the Warriors, but the Kings still had that same mentality. And so they finally put them away. But... You, it doesn't take away from what the Warriors obviously has, yeah. have accomplished over the years. It, it's over. They'll always be in it because Steph's there. But let's just acknowledge tonight. The Golden State Warriors did not make the playoffs. Last year, they were the sixth seed. They advanced, and then they got eliminated. Probably should have lost to the Kings, but they had enough. They they had enough in the tank. Yeah, Curry gave that motivational speech to the team before Game 7. Kevon Looney gave everything he had. I had one person tell me this week, I'm like, that talking descri- describing Ke- Kevon Looney and why he's not playing a lot is because his hips are mashed potatoes. Aww. He gave everything he could in that series. Yeah. And this team will still be competitive with Steph, but it, it's over. And it, it sometimes it comes to an end in a surprising way. It does. It's never like it's this this perfect story. The Kings put them out tonight. And it, it, you know, you say that part is definitely over, but you also look at 
their future of what they can rebuild with some of the young pieces that they do have. It just doesn't mean, and I think for Warriors fans, it's like championship or bust. Like you got a taste of it and it's like, well, no, 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 no. Like it can't just be over. Like they'll figure it out next year. And it's like, it's just not that easy in this yep. league. I mean, you're seeing this Sacramento Kings team that was a third seed last year and finally find an identity and, and find this push. And then this year, Barely, well, not barely, but making the plan, right? Making the plan, having to beat a Warriors team that has truly found every way to always win these type of games. But tonight, and with all their guys playing healthy, couldn't find a way. Trace Jackson Davis only played 10 minutes in this game. He had two points, one rebound. Uh, Draymond played 35 minutes. He had 12 points, six assists. He had uh, two steals, three turnovers. Wiggins. Just 12 points, 4 of 11 shooting in this game. Had three turnovers. We mentioned Clay with zero. Steph finished the game with 22, which is like such a low number for him. But it's kind of what he's done since the All-Star break. And, you know, we've heard a lot about Steph and his fatigue recently. He looked tired out there. And I'll tell you what, Keon Ellis tired his ass out. Yeah. Keon Ellis made him work. And that's what you have to do. He was 8 of 16 from 3. Excuse me, 8 of 16 shooting, 3 of 7 from 3. He had six turnovers. Is Kendra here? Kendra is here. Is she going to stop in Should for I a second? Her? Yeah. yeah. Let me uh, get... Kendra Andrews is back, too. She was with us last night. Maybe she'll hop on with us, too. Um, so she just arrived at the studio. The do some more studio. Um, their bench gave them some stuff. You know, Moody dropped 16 points. I felt like he gave them some energy. Five of eight shooting. Kaminga, 16 points on six of 15 shooting. He also had seven rebounds. But, like... If those guys are going to be the guys, then the Kings have to feel good with where they're at, right? Like, oh, Kaminga's going to try to beat us? Moody? That's fine as long as it's not Steph and Clay. And if you would have told me before the game that Steph and Clay would combine for 22 points, I'd be like, you're insane. That's what happened in this game. Insane. Absolutely insane. Appreciate you guys being here tonight while we wait for Morgan to come back. I do want to mention that tonight's podcast presented by our friends over at Northwest Exteriors. If you need new windows on your house, also, they've supported us all year long. They hopped on early before the season started and said, we want to be a part of this ride because you have an awesome audience. Go check out Northwest Exteriors. They're in Sacramento. TrustNorthwest.com. You need windows on your house? It's a game changer, right? If you have old windows, you're letting heat in. You're letting the, the hot air in the summertime, the cold air in. They're not energy efficient. This will save you money. It'll make your house look better. So do the right thing. Go to check out TrustNorthwest.com because it's simple. They are simply the best. Trust Northwest. Appreciate everyone's support of the Ducemo podcast. Uh, Kendra Andrews is going to join yeah, us? Yeah, she's going to join us. This is, this is turning into a mega stream. <laughs> I know. Test, test, test. Just yep. <coughs> test, test, test. I'm testing the mic. Um, there we go. Okay. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Just come on in when you're ready. Anyway, um, um, I just did Northwest. We're having some fun. Uh, oh, who would be your rock and soul player of the game? Oh, uh, my rock. I think it's two. It's Keon and Keegan, oh, right? You're, you're going to answer for me, huh? That's what I think. Um, yeah, okay. It's going to be hey, folks. Keon and Keegan. Hey, Bubba. Here, come, come on, on dogs. Oh, Kendra Andrews. Here you go, Kendra. Kendra, who's your rock and soul oh. diner player of the game? I know. Oh, come here. Um, he's good. He's good. I just want to hold him. Don't hold him back I too opened, much. I opened a whole can of worms. Here, let um, me see him. My player of the game yeah. would have to be Keegan Murray. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. I think, I mean... You have the box score pulled up right there. What is it? Oh, yeah. 32 points for Keegan Murray, 10 of 20 shooting, 8 of 13. Thank you. Three. Like, that was – he averaged 9.2 points per game in the first-round series against the Warriors last season, I think it was. Like, Kendra, you're so good at him. this. Go, Kendra. <laughs> Go, Kendra. Yeah, that's actually a theme song. I know. Yeah. That's why I was singing <laughs> yeah. it. I, I, so I think that, that was – the difference maker, but I will also say that my honorable mention yeah. player of the game was Keon Ellis. 
because of the defense that he uh, played on Steph Curry. Have, mm. Jesus, I have numbers. Oh, so. I have. Oh my I love God. me some numbers. Also, shout out to ESPN's Kendra Andrews. Yeah. She just got back from Golden One Center <laughs> where she was in the Warriors locker room. So we'll have to get to her perspective on that. Ooh. But what's your, your Keon Ellis Steph Curry number? Well, I'm kind of slow right it's now. Okay. It's okay. No, take your time. Yeah, take your time, dude. Hanging. It's been... It's oh, you'll like this number. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Keegan Murray scored on nine different primary defenders. Oh, tell me. Throw them all at him. Yeah. He'll score good. on all of them. <laughs> I like that one. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm such a slow reader no, right now. No, Kendra, stop. We're chilling, dude. We're chilling. We got two-legged dogs. Yeah, Kings win. Keegan and Keon are definitely the Rock and Soul player of the game. And next up for Sacramento, they take on the Pelicans. We'll preview that game coming up on Friday in just a bit. I'm excited to preview that because you can't lose six times to so one team, right? Huh? Here, here's one. Okay, what? through three quarters, the Warriors were two in, of nine when Keon was the guy contesting the shots. And that was 0 of three from Steph Dude. in the third quarter. I, another one. That's got to be one of the more shocking things. Oh, here we go. And Steph averaged 0.83 points per play and had four turnovers when Keon Ellis was the final defender. Who would have thought that Keon Ellis would be clamping Steph Curry in a winner-go-home game? Clamping. Well, if only they had him in game seven of last Dude. Oh, <laughs> throw that um, one in our face. Uh, Kendra, also bring the mic a little closer to you, Matthew. You're, you're fine. Right, you're you're right, fine. You're right. You're um, right. So... We've been obviously recapping everything that happened tonight. Uh, you were in the Warriors locker room after the game. What was kind of the mood from them after mm -hmm. this? Because obviously this is a significant moment for them. Yeah. I, th I think it was very, it was a subdued post game. Mm. And, and I, I, I think back to after their season ended last year at the hands of the Lakers in the second round. And there was some disappointment, but I also think that the, just the way that last season shook out, the Warriors knew that the, the ceiling of that season was a bit lower. They thought that they could still make a little run, which they did in making it to the second round. Yeah. But just, again, I think we talked about it on the podcast yeah. the other night, the way that the season started with Jordan and Draymond, there was just a weird thing. With this season, there was also lots of weird stuff going on. But sure. again, I the Warriors really had this belief that they it was all coming together now and they were able to make this run. So to have their season end in the play-in, it was described as upsetting, a horrible feeling, all of these different things. And they said that the Kings, I think the direct quote was total domination from from Sacramento, which is something that... Again, we talked about it the other day. Three of their four games was decided by one point. They have they won the seven game series last season. It's it's a new feeling, and it's won the other really big topic, which I don't even know how much you guys like care to dive into. Though is now you're entering a summer where Clay Thompson is is, is an unrestricted free agent, and he finished with zero <laughs> points on zero of ten shooting with zero made three pointers. Um, Deuce, Not good. Deuce, I'd want to ask her really quick, yeah, too, because yeah. because something that, you know, from our perspective, we keep saying, like, look, you play a part in this story of ending the dynasty. Is that too dramatic to say, or is that just time will tell? I mean, time will tell, okay. because I think it's impossible to sit here on April 16th and say definitively, without a doubt, Clay Fair. Thompson is not coming back. Yeah. Because there's a very real possibility that he does come back. A lot of decisions have to be made, both him personally and the Warriors as an organization of how they want to approach those discussions from where they left off over the summer and kind of how and why they've stalled out during yeah. the regular season. But, yeah, if he doesn't come back, you're going to look back at this game and you're going to look at his stat line and I watched him walk off the court and I'm going to look at him... I'm going to think of him, you know, first it's when he checked out of the game with like just over mm. two minutes left and shaking his head and you go through like dapping everyone up and hugging all the trainers and all the teammates before taking a seat. And then it's after the final buzzer, he's walking towards the tunnel and he stops, does a 360 turn and looks Whoa. back and sees the Kings celebrating, sees the beam being rolled out onto the court. And then he finished walking off. So that like, again, if he doesn't come back, 
you revisit this game. And I'm not going to say that this was the moment that he decided he's not going to come back or the Warriors saw his stat line and that's when it was decided he's not coming back. That's not it. Yeah. But this, if he doesn't come back, this being the scene of him in a Warriors uniform for the last time is something that sticks. That will be in her piece too. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's... Um, Go read my story on ESPN.com. Is it up yet? <laughs> I don't it's think coming so. up soon. I um, think so. Yeah, it's... These type of things don't end pretty. No. And, and and maybe there was like this dystopian hope of it ending pretty. But you, when was the last time, and maybe I know the answer to this, but like when was the last time we actually saw the end of something great before the time was up, if that makes sense. Right. Because it was always MJ leaves and goes somewhere else or – you know, LeBron j- jumps somewhere, you know, like, the yeah, yeah, y- you, you don't, you can think about like, okay, when Dirk, when it, Dirk's career was kind of ending with the Mavs, those weren't pretty seasons or, you know, when Kobe was winding down his career, he, the Lakers weren't winning championships no. and he had some not great years after, you know, his, his injury and, and stuff, but like not at this yeah. level with so many, it was always one guy. It wasn't so many pieces. Yeah. And it's going to be fascinating to see where they go from here. I thought one other interesting thing, just looking back at it too, is like, we talked so much about the bigs, you know, we're like, all right, well, how are they going to handle some bonus? Are they going to go small? Trace Jackson Davis, he, he plays seven minutes in the first yeah. half. Curry doesn't, or Curry doesn't go back to him until in the fourth quarter. You got Jackson Davis and Looney combining for 19 minutes tonight. They just like to go small. It felt like in this game, and I guess I get it, Kerr was searching. I mean, he was just throwing. It was like, well, Moody's going in there, and he's going to play some minutes, Absolutely. and he had some productive things. Kaminga, it, he was just looking for anything. Yeah. I, it, it, was, it was a game of adjustments, and I think it's something that maybe, if I'm correct, like Mike Brown talked about before the game of, and maybe Steve Kerr did too, just about like because of how familiar these guys are, it is just going to be a game of adjustments. Of course, I don't think the adjustments were made because of the reasons why we thought they yeah. were going right. to be made. Um, but it it really, to me, the, the way that the Warriors played and the manner in which they lost really just captured a lot of the issues that they had throughout the season. Turnovers, poor three-point shooting, and when Steph is struggling or Steph is not at his best or the other team is just containing him, there is no one else there to help out. Like Moses Moody was their second leading scorer tonight. Steph only had 22. And like, yeah, like Keon Ellis played incredible defense on him and they were taking him out of his his motions and what he likes to do. But the fact that there was nothing, there was no adjustment he could make. There was no person that Steve Kerr could turn to. Nope. Um, when Steph wasn't having his night, that that was a lot of their losses this season. Because I thought I, I thought the Kings defense, and we talked about this earlier, mm. was doing such a good job of not throwing a whole bunch of blitzes at him. Yeah. Because what we've seen the Kings do when they throw blitzes at guys, it's they don't rotate over the right way. And someone like it would go Steph to Draymond to lob threat, you know, whoever mm-hmm. or du- whoever's in the dunker spot cut over. And that's why you saw maybe two blitzes happen, you know, by these guys where it was up by the half court line. And besides that, it was just great defense guys fighting through screens, mostly, you know, Keon Ellis or Keegan Murray. And the way that they were fighting through screens, being aggressive with him, completely taking him out of his game, not even allowing him to be smooth and create for others. Uh, It was, it it was just like you said, the word that was being used, the used, pure dominance yeah. by the Sacramento Kings. It's so, see, I, I asked Steve after the game about like their turnovers. Cause again, what, like 12, 13, S- 16, 16 no. turnovers oh. at 16 the end turnovers, turned into right. 20 points. Well. And how many did Steph have? Steph had six. So, and I asked Steve like where, cause again, that was something that they talked about heading into the game. We, we have to take care of the ball. It's been such an issue for them all year. Yeah. And something that Steve talked about was because the Kings were defending Steph so well. He was, almost like over playing to try and get other people involved. And he was overthinking the move that he has to make to either make the pass or just the ball handling move itself. And then it would result in a turnover. But that starts with the way that the Kings were playing defense. 
This is just, I, I, we said at the start, this is the result I did not see coming. Oh, I know. I don't remember <laughs> at the end, remember we are like, what would be the most insane thing if the Kings yeah. just killed them? Yeah. And that's what happened. I don't, think, I don't even think anyone thought, like, maybe that the Kings could win. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought, I thought there sure. was a chance, but again, like, the dominance that they played with. And the is, dominance wasn't, like we already mentioned, wasn't, oh, De'Aaron and Sabonis having 40-point games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing that, and I'm sure you guys probably talked all about this on the <laughs> podcast, but the other thing that I was really impressed with by the Kings is because, it, for me, in the first quarter, like, Kings came out super hot. Keegan was shooting the lights mm. out. They looked super good. I'm like, okay. Mm. And then the Warriors were in within four, yeah. four, four at halftime. Yep. And I was talking to a couple of people and like, oh, the Warriors have them right where they want them. I the said Warriors that. win this yes. game because how many times have they uh, you leave the door open and then they just kick it down. And so the fact that the Kings were able to, by the midway through the third quarter, mm. regain that yeah. lead was like, I, I so many teams have messed that yeah, up. Because the Warriors, did cut, did, they cut it to like one, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, they, and again, they're a good third quarter team. They But they allowed 37 points in the third quarter. I know. Well, no, this they I'm, I'm going to go back and look at what? the third for a second because I'm trying to remember. they they Didn't they cut it to one in the third? Yeah. It was after Wiggins had a, a, a score inside. It was 58-57 Kings at the 10-12 mark. Got it, And yes. then the Kings just took off from there. Yep. They I absolutely took it off. It was in the third. Oh, no, never mind. That was the fourth quarter. I thought the swing, I, I already mentioned this on the pod, and this is turning into a mega podcast, but I don't think any Kings fan really gives a shit. They're like, yeah, They're this like, is great. Like, party. <laughs> the swing to me was when Len fouled Wiggins on the three. Yes. They reviewed it. It was a flagrant foul. Yes. You're going, he's shooting three free throws, and, and they got the ball two. with 5.6. You're like, this is huge. He misses two free throws. They don't score at the end because Curry gets blocked by Ellis. They scored one point. Mm -hmm. And you're like, dude, this was this was their chance to maybe yeah. even cut it to 10. Yeah. Their yeah. swing Man. going into the fourth. Yeah. And that's and yeah. for me, for me, the dagger shot happened like way before Ed, there was like five dagger oh. shots. But to me, when I looked at the two reporters next to me and we all kind of nodded our heads and we're like, is when Harrison Barnes hit that shot uh, over Draymond. Draymond. That was it. Yes, dude. Like, and it was so poetic for Harrison Barnes in so many ways. Yeah. Right? She, she's good at her job. Like, literally, we were just talking about that 20 minutes ago. Well, and it's, no, it is, it's. With all the history there from right. his yes. time with the Warriors, right. how it ended, the and things his, with Draymond. And exactly. even him having an up-and-down yeah. season with the Sacramento Kings where we're saying sometimes he's invisible out there. And yeah. for him to have this type of contribution on a night, on a game where it matters most, it's just been exciting to see. I feel like one of the other things, though, that we did talk about maybe last night was a lot of the younger guys with mm -hmm. the Golden State Warriors doing a good job lately, stepping up, that becoming a lot more of their identity and yeah. the trust that's in them. You know, they didn't step up tonight. No. And that... that I thought Moody did. Moody... Okay, yes, uh, Kami, yes, yes. Kami had Kami his Kami moments, had but, then, but he also took some bad shots, and which is By typical. the way, when I say step up, I mean, we've seen Pajemski have, like, a double-digit yeah. point game, or, you know, whatever else it is, and the energy that he can bring. Um, we've seen even the way that Draymond's been able to get them more involved in how much we talked about Trace Jackson Davis last mm -hmm. night on our, pod, on our preview as well. But I, kept, I said to Deuce, I, I said I felt like this younger squad, even if you felt a certain way about the dynasty of the Golden State Warriors and everything, like they still have an opportunity to develop Absolutely. and be a good team. But I, I don't see them as a great team unless they make some changes. Yeah, I, I ch changes will be made. Like you kind of have to at this point. They right. didn't make changes at the deadline. They're not. They're not typically a deadline team, but they didn't make changes then. So okay, now you head into the off season and that's your opportunity. And look, I think Warriors fans and people who watch the Warriors, I think we either talked about this on the podcast or after or before or multiple times <laughs> in our <laughs> friendship, is like it, everyone's so used to just the Warriors being at the top all the time. Yes. And what we're seeing now is what Joe Lacob talked about three years ago, which is this two timelines which is probably like a trigger word for any <laughs> yeah one who like likes the warriors or follows the warriors for the last three three four years 
But like that's kind of what it is now of these this young group and this veteran group. And it's not going to be this seamless passing of the baton. Like there are going to be growing pains. And this is where you see it. You have three guys in Steph, Clay, and Draymond who have seen every inch of this game. And there are no surprises. You have guys like Andrew Wiggins and who's, who's experienced and stuff. You guys like Chris Paul, who's yeah. extremely experienced. And then you have these younger guys that are still trying to navigate it and find their way. And like, I'm sure you guys talked a lot about the Kings last season, how that series, that was their first yeah. at bat is their stage fright in a game seven, mm-hmm. those types of things. And like for Trace Jackson Davis, like he looked a little, a little jittered by the moment. And yeah, and I, I felt that, but I also felt like I'm like, Kurt, you just got it. He, you have to show some trust. And that was the one thing with Kerr this year that I felt like there were times where he just would not trust Trace Jackson Davis. And he finally started to, and Trace kind of thrived in that role. I know he didn't play totally perfect down the stretch, but I think these are the opportunities. You just like trust him. Just, just let him figure it out. There's only one way to do this, right? I don't know. It, it's tough. It, I just I felt, think in a playoff series, maybe, but in a yeah, winner go home guess. situation, I think it's a little trickier. I just, my thing is like, there. how do you play the guy seven minutes and then you put him back in in the fourth quarter as like, well, let's we'll just take a swing at this and see if he can but change I the do, landscape. But I do think, and this is just like, I just the way that S- Steve talked like the day before and stuff, I think there was going into this matchup, not like trepidation or not, confidence yeah. but a, a strong understanding and knowing that like this matchup might not mm. work because of how quickly he moved away from it yeah he was already committed to playing Kavon Looney I think because of the history of the mat like of how well he's done yeah. with that matchup and other stuff and so that was already part of the plan neither of it worked like the yeah. big lineup just wasn't working turn away they go on a run to close the second quarter uh-huh. you're within four let's stick with what worked. We're going to start coming in the second half. And then it just, and then like you said before, there was yeah. no answer. I felt like the Kings defense really adjusted well in the, the second half when they decided to start Kaminga. I'm like, oh, dude, this small lineup worked. They were getting, uh, Sabonis. Sabonis switched on to Kaminga. He was taking advantage, but I thought the Kings defense was way more locked into that in the second half. And Kaminga started to miss some shots. He missed some shots at the rim. The Kings were Doing a good job contesting at the rim. Really quick, too. It's just so great to see for the Sacramento Kings how beneficial it was for them in this game that they hadn't seen the Warriors since, what, January? Yeah. January 25th. January 25th. Yeah. And it was beneficial in the way that Steve Kerr never really got to test out Trace Jackson Davis uh, on Domas Sabonis in this matchup. He never really got to see this play out and what yeah. this team could do with those two matching up. And he had to experience it in this winner go home I, I game. also think that's why I brought up earlier in the podcast. I think there were times early in this game where Steph was like, oh, I'm cool with Keon on me. Because mm-hmm. in his head, he's going, I can take this yeah. guy. Right. And then Keon had an impact. Yeah. So I, I just thought that was interesting because, you know, so often, you know, especially against the Kings, like Curry goes hunting. They hunted Sabonis. They tried their best to hunt Sabonis at mm-hmm. times. That, that's the smart play. But um, I, I felt like they were less likely to hunt Sabonis and hunt other weaknesses on the Kings defense because I think Curry felt comfortable trying to go at Keon Ellis, not necessarily knowing everything about Keon. Like, we see Keon all the time. Right. But they don't right. see him. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I thought that was yeah. pretty bad. Well, it's the difference of being on a scouting report versus not being on a scouting report. And there's only so much you can scout without actually having played him to know, like, yes. what actually works and doesn't work for your system. <sighs> what a night. <laughs> <laughs> what a night. <laughs> um, from a Sacramento uh, perspective. Yeah. Was there anything that surprised you, Kendra? I know you've seen this team too. Were you were you just surprised by the defense? Did did I mean obviously Keon's performance, but yeah, I think you know, I think maybe I was most surprised about how well they did with Domas having such an off night. You felt like it was an off night. See, I, I well like for I them, do. they've seen they've seen bigger games out of it. I feel like Draymond kind of like owned Sabonis, especially down the stretch of that game. 
And so I think, it, uh, like, yeah. It's an Draymond had some nice plays on Sabonis yeah. where he hits a couple of nice strips, um, deflections, and Sabonis, that's the thing. I thought Draymond, honestly, actually had a pretty good game. I yeah. mean, he, he made sure to be physical with him and with Keegan. And those guys can be soft at the ball at times. Yeah. I, I felt like overall, I felt like Sabonis was not backing down. Where I, I thought last year during the playoffs, I'm like, stop falling to the ground. You sure. got to play right. through yeah, this shit. That part's true and for tonight, sure. he played through it. And, and it was tough. Like, it's always going to be tough against those guys. And he missed he missed his four mid range shots he that he did yes. t- that true. he did and attempt. And so, okay. like, you know, it's funny. It's funny seeing it from Kendra's perspective compared to ours because, like, we came in here being like, you know, he was aggressive. He tried I to fight through people. Good. His defense yeah. was good. But his flaws were the things that we saw as the negatives yep. in that last right. matchup or, you know, whatever matchups against the Golden State Warriors. But it's like his flaws didn't didn't bring down the team. No. You know? That part's true. And I guess that's kind of like the the surprise. Like, not that the Kings can't play without without Sabonis playing really well, but I think for someone who doesn't watch them on the day-to-day and see all of the type of wins that the Kings put together. And then also, like I mentioned it before, just the surprising part of like I've seen so many teams fumble the bag when they have that lead and the Warriors get back in it so I think that to me was surprising because at like I won't lie like at halftime I'm like looking at flights to New Orleans like okay hotels flights like let's get this all squared away and then midway through the third quarter I'm like "Mm, maybe not yet let's let's wait and see are you going to New Orleans yeah are you gonna cover the Kings now I our other lovely ESPN reporter will be in New Orleans. Okay. Got it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. If and when you guys make it to uh, Oklahoma City, Ooh. you know I'm a big. F- I don't want to. I love Oklahoma City. Yeah, <laughs> I love Casey <laughs> so much. <laughs> um, okay, here's the stat that I, we mentioned: the offensive rebounds a lot tonight. Yeah, mm. I do want to mention a couple of things because yeah. you you said this earlier. Sabonis only had one of them, and he's like the best rebounder. Yeah. Harrison with two offensive rebounds. Keegan had three offensive rebounds. Ellis had two. Davion, two. Lyles, two. Len, two. This number, 25 to nine yeah. second chance points. Insane. There was a point in the game, I think it was, was in the f- was in the first half or the third quarter. I, I can't remember, but I tweeted something out a lot of like the Warriors had zero offensive rebounds they had zero fast break points wow. and they had like 10 turnovers at that point and like and the oh kings my. i'll find it oh find it my god yeah i mean on the game it was 25 9 kings on second chance points fast break points 12 to 6 the yeah. warriors were one of one of five on uh fast break points tonight yeah they're with four and a half minutes left in the first half, the Warriors had zero offensive boards, zero fast break points, and eight turnovers. And the Kings had eight boards, twelve fast break points. Yeah. And all the little things. Off you're the Warriors you're just not going to win games when no. the opposing team has 98 shot attempts and you have also, 80. Also, here's a nice stat for you, dude. Oh, I love this. So Let's 37 go. 37 points in the third. Give me right? a hell yeah. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So 37 points in the third. The Kings shot 78% from three that quarter. Wow. That's their second best three-point percentage in a quarter this season. <sighs> Let's go against this. Yeah, the final numbers tonight. Kings shot 44%, but they were 18 of 39 from three, 46%. They out-rebounded the Warriors 49 to 42. Sacramento also had 28 assists, just eight turnovers in this game. That was pretty significant. Uh, the starters, everyone scored 15 or more. 15 from Ellis, 16 from Sabonis, 32 from King and Murray, 17 from Harrison Barnes, 24 from De'Aaron Fox. Wow. Oh, man. I Fun stuff. Amazing. Next up for the Sacramento Kings, they play Friday. That's a 6.30 tip-off Oof. against the New Orleans Pelicans, a team they have not beaten this year. The Pelicans were in that play-in game today against the Lakers, they tried to rally back. In fact, they tied the game at one point, but Zion left the game. Brandon Ingram didn't even play down the stretch of this mm-hmm. game. He only played 25 minutes. Zion left the game. It's been reported it's a hamstring issue. Yeah. Will he play on Friday? I don't know. A hamstring issue for him and what he tries to do as a player, I feel like that's going to be pretty significant. 
They lost to the Lakers today, 110 to 106. So back-to-back losses for them against the Lakers at home. Uh, LeBron in that game had 23 points, nine rebounds, nine assists. Zion left with 40 points in the game. Damn. So who knows what the hell is happening? Um, the Kings have played them five times. Yeah. They're 0-5 yep. against them this yeah. year. They've been pretty. I know this isn't like great analysis, but... Can't lose six, huh? You can't <laughs> lose six times. <laughs> I knew. Scientific. I mean, that just seems like impossible. I, I mean, I think a lot hinges on uh, Zion, if, if he's yes, able to go or not. Sure. And Sacramento's had so, so, much, so many issues trying to defend him and slow him down. If he plays, and mm-hmm. I mentioned this to you last time. What? They may have to place a bonus and Len together against Valanciunas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, why not Williamson. just go double big and, like, do something that would seem irrational? Um, because even, like, tonight, if you look at Steve Kerr and, like, you know, just feeling desperate and trying to figure out something, it's like, be desperate, but figure out something that works, right. you know? And like, even if it, and if you, you need to give it a little bit more time, like give it a little bit more time, but you got to make sure that if you are losing a winner, go home game that you have to keep trying to make adjustments. And yeah, that could be something that we see. I don't know. I, don't I, th- know. I think too, you know, it's, I'm trying to temper my optimism a little bit because I just, no, I, I, I thought the Kings played an awesome game and it wasn't just shot. Sometimes you win games cause you make shots Yeah, and it can be misleading. Yeah. But the Kings won tonight because they played defense. Yeah. Now, how are they going to handle a team with more size? You know, the, the Warriors don't have anyone the size of Zion Williamson sure. and Jonas Valanciunas, right? right? And then they've got Larry Nance. They've got all these long guys. Long Herb Jones, Jones, Dyson Daniels, Trey Murphy. CJ's killed him. I mean, even look at the moments that Kaminga would have on De'Aaron and, like, how he can hound him down, right? That length, his long arms, yep. all those things. And yep. so... Alvarado has and, killed the Kings. And you think yeah. about all these players on the Pelicans and there's this matchup. It's not... And even if... Even if B.I. isn't 100%. Even if Zion isn't 100%. Uh, CJ King's killer, you know, but it, honestly, I look and this is shit changes fast in this league. The Kings are feeling really good after tonight. You know, they feel good. You slayed the beat and you did it in a, slayed the beast. in a dominant way. Yeah. The Pelicans were scuffling a little bit. They had a chance on Sunday yeah. to beat the Lakers and get into the top six. Mm. They folded. They came into tonight. They were down 18 points in this game. Had to rally back. Well, now Zion's a little banged up. Ingram's not all the way back yet. CJ had an off night. Fitting Ingram back into this team that was playing well. I don't know. It's just, it's in some ways great timing for the Kings to get them. Like maybe this is their chance where they can finally beat them. They're on the road, but the Pelicans aren't a good home team. You got faith? I... I <laughs> She's not supposed to have faith. She's a reporter, Morgan Reagan. I mean, not faith. Okay, fine. Do you have, from what you have witnessed. Yeah. Do you think that the Kings like, have a chance? Yeah, thank yes, you. They, they put they it in the, the right way. And I do me. think that, like, coming off of such a yeah. big win, like, mom- momentum is a real thing I in agree. sports and stuff. And the momentum, at least from, like, a morale standpoint, is on the side of the Kings. I, It's, like, it's. They were hoping for the Lakers matchup, but yeah, you you, ha- you have to adapt. I agree with you. You kind of just throw you know, might throw some things at the wall to see what sticks. It might be for thirty seconds, and you yeah. say no, yeah. no, 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 no. We're not doing that anymore. That is not working. But when, well, when was the last time the Kings and Pelicans Did played you, each so other? So that was just uh, like last week. Week. Mm. So they On went, TNT. wasn't Pelican oh, yeah. Suns back yes. to back? That's what yes. it was. Pelicans, and they, again, dominated the Kings. The Kings got down 23 early, got back in the game. CJ made shot game. 99% from three-point yeah. land. So. He was 9 of 12 in that game. Uh, and then uh, then they went back down 23 again. They cut the lead. It's just been a bad matchup yeah. for them. The length has really bugged a lot of guys on the team. They packed the paint because... That's the play right now with Fox and Sabonis and let other guys beat you. And that night, Sacramento didn't have a lot. Look, I think a lot of it is going to come down to, like, where Zion is at. And kind of as what you were saying, it's not – to me, it's not encouraging to hear – 
a, it's a hamstring injury. Or, mm-hmm. You know, Willie Green in his post game said he was feeling tightness, but he's getting an MRI. And to me, those two things don't fully go hand in hand. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you feel tightness, it it's it's tightness. But for him to leave the game in the situation in that the team game. was in, what was like three minutes yeah, left I or mean, something, tie game. They had a chance to win even without and, him. And yeah. that, and we all know Zion's injury history. Like, it, it is. If I'm a Pelicans person, I'm like I yeah. am concerned about that, and and you know if he's not out there, I think it does crack the door open just a little bit more for the Kings. Crazy, um, crazy. Even if he's not 100, percent it cracks the I door agree. open for the Kings. So I think a lot of it is gonna ride on that, and then you kind of go for, go from and, there. And I think the theme is the same with this game, where like. Look, Fox and Sabonis have to do their thing, but it's going to be the others. And I feel like Keegan made such a big step tonight. For what Keegan did offensively, and he was still competing on the other end, matched up with Steph at times. Like, I was beyond impressed with what Keegan Murray did in this game. This was a big game for a second-year player who showed flashes late in the series against the Warriors last year after a slow start. For him to play this well in this meaningful of a game, he's going to have to... I'm not saying 32 I points, know. but he's yeah. going to have to give you 20 if you want to win that game well, against New Orleans. We'll need to preview a few more things this week as right, well yeah, with I know. it. I know, Morgan. I know what you're saying. I'm saying, yeah. I, I know. We're we, forcing Kendra to work okay, a 20-hour okay. day. I know, I know. All right. Um, <laughs> also, uh, just a couple of things real fast before we wind down. <laughs> okay, oh, so well Kings, Kings and Pelicans. <laughs> Kings and Pelicans coming up on Friday. Uh-huh. If the Kings win, game one against OKC will be on Sunday. Okay. Game two would be Wednesday in Oklahoma City. Wow. Game three would be oh, Saturday against Sacramento. Game four, Sun. Uh, what? You're jumping. You're just jumping ahead. Can we get to the Pelicans game? This like, the fans need to know how quick of a turnaround this is. They're gonna find out Friday. <laughs> so game one would be Sunday in, in OKC. I'd be hanging out with Kendra <laughs> Monday and Tuesday. God, before what are we Wednesday. gonna do in Oklahoma, dude? We're going to have some fun in OKC. <laughs> I'm just going to, we, we got to get there first. You're right. Come on. Like, I know. I'm not, I, I'm going to be you honest. You win one game against the what Warriors time is it? and you think it's like. <laughs> it's almost 1.30 in the morning. I'm going to be completely honest. Oh. I'm feeling really good about the Kings <laughs> in New Orleans. Okay. Why are you it. doing this? I'm don't just telling you how it. I'm don't feeling right now. This behavior. I'm just telling you how I'm feeling right this second. You need to get some sleep, psycho. Oh man! Do we do wait? Did we do a Shreve no, Jewelers moment? We of the do game? need to pick a Shreve Jewelers mm. moment of the game. Thank you. Like the I, sparkliest moment. I think the yes. moment. Oh, th- I know my moment. De'Aaron oh. Fox put back right away. That I, was in the first mm, quarter. Yes, and I felt like it set the tone. Yeah, it, yeah. Was it was nice. sick as shit. Man, I, I did. Nice. I would. Nice that's one. a great one. I think the Keon Ellis blocking Steph at the end of the mm. third was big. Okay, that was very nice. Okay, fine. I'm gonna. Th- I I think I know Kendra's. What? The Harrison Barnes. I think it's the Harrison I think Barnes it's on the Draymond. Harrison Barnes on Draymond too. Wow, that like that was just the moment that again we kind of all sat there and I was like, it was almost the lead of my story. It felt the but d- then like it wasn't. It was the dagger. It was the da- it was the dagger. It was, it was and and the other thing I have a really sick video of that of that shot too. Oh. That I'll show you guys afterwards because the other thing if you watch the video. It wasn't an easy shot at all. Harrison Burns was no. searching. He was stumbling over. He almost like stepped out of bounds. And then he had like just that itty bitty bit of space and like and it worked. But yes. there were three times in that play where I'm like, oh, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. <laughs> oh, okay, it worked. Definitely our Sharif Jewelers moment of the game. Okay, and also chat, I'm not penciling the Kings in. Okay, there's then, a lot of people who are like, Deuce, come on. Oh, Deuce is already penciling you, them in the no, OKC. No, no, no. I just, I'm feeling good. Uh, Lil Uzi Burt says, we're clapping Pelican's cheeks next. Okay. That'd no, you got to pluck the feathers first. Like, what are we doing? Oh, uh, well, hey, Kings fans, enjoy this win. We appreciate you hanging out with us for almost two hours tonight. Oh it's God, late, 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 late. Um, we'll definitely have more content. I'm guessing we'll probably have another podcast tomorrow and the next day. We got a lot to do. I uh, appreciate you guys so much for hanging out with us. We love you guys, but we gots to go. You're all the best and badass for being here tonight. Thank you so much. We'll see you later. How about that win? Deuce and Mo, Deuce and Mo, Deuce and Mo. They tell you what they know. Deuce and Mo, Deuce and Mo, Deuce and Mo. The podcast that you know. Deuce